What is up? My name is Matt Workman, and welcome to CineTracer version 0.60. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use the Noda inertia wheels in CineTracer. So here we are in CineTracer on the flat map, and the last tutorial we looked at how to use the new camera system. The geared head here is how you're going to use the inertia wheels, and it's also part of the new camera system in that it will not save either yet, uh, but it will in the very near future. So just like the other cameras, uh, you can change the sensor size, which is really important to get that right for me. So you could do that here. So we'll go to like a full frame camera. So to actually control this camera, we need to do some stuff here with the address and the port. So if you have the inertia wheels, you need to do some setup on your end. You need to switch it to like API mode. Uh, I usually hardwire it in my case, and you need to have the inertia wheels app, which I'll show you right now. So here is the Inertia Wheels app running on Windows. I think this works on Mac. I haven't been able to test it yet. And so you're going to plug it in. You're going to turn them on. And you're going to need to select your serial port. For me, it just always ends up being COM3. Just test it until you find it. Uh, this is very important to look at here. This is your local IP address. So you're not going to get hacked showing this. It's just your local network one. Uh, and this port number is arbitrary. We're just using 1234. You could pretty much use anything. But you know, 1234 is pretty safe. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write this IP address here and this port number here as well. That's it. That's all that has to happen. Uh, I'm going to start the inertia wheels here. It's a green light. And now when I spin them, we should see at the bottom the pan and tilt integers changing. right? And so that's actually what's getting sent to CineTracer to enable this to actually work. So I'm going to remember this IP address is 205 is basically all that really matters. So 192. Dot one, dot one six eight dot. I forgot already. <laughs> uh, two zero five. And did I do the IP part backwards? I did. I'm sorry. This is a bad demo. Uh, I'm not much uh, at networking. I really suck at networking, so I wrote the IP address wrong. So it's dot one dot two zero five. Sorry. Uh, one two three four and connect. So you saw it dance there. So now. As I spin the uh, inertia wheels, the camera is changing as well. So very exciting. Uh, I'm going to show you how I recommend uh, doing this. I'm going to move my keyboard forward like this. And I'm going to bring my inertia wheels in front of me. And then I have my Xbox controller right here. So the Xbox controller and then the wheels. And that's how the system is designed. If you saw my virtual production demos in Unreal Engine, that's how I kind of decided to organize all the things. You can use mouse and keyboard as well. but with the controller in this, you can get everything done. So I'm going to then hit F and go inside the camera. And hopefully, we can do everything we need to do here. So hopefully, you watched the video on the update to the camera system. Exact same camera system is here. So uh, the back two triggers are going to bring you up and down. On the mouse and keyboard, that's space and shift. Uh, the left joystick moves you. And the right joystick, this is kind of important here, uh, is the mouse, actually, as well. You can't tilt. Right? You don't want to tilt this setup, in my opinion. So you can only change which way generally the whole system is looking. But keep in mind that you can rotate like this, and you can rotate like this. They're different. And pan and tilt is written on the little monitor down there. So if you wanted to zero out your pan and tilt, uh, you'd be able to do that looking at that uh, little readout like this. And I'm going to add a reset button, too, eventually. So uh, this is the view I recommend operating in for now. There's actually some weird kind of glitches. Uh, visually that I'm still working out when you go into full screen view. So this is, for now, the best way to do with the Noda inertia wheel. So again, we can change focal length, something like this. And I'll kind of frame up on our guy here. The focus doesn't really matter in this mode, but uh, just for fun, I'll hold the right bumper. And now it's going to keep him in focus, not that you can really see it. And so now you can practice your camera moves, right? So I'm going to pan over and tilt down to him, keeping him in the left third. And we'll go back like this to here. And you can change the settings of the inertia wheels in the app. That's kind of beyond the scope of this. Uh, but if you're using inertia wheels already for your gimbal work, your remote head work, uh, we will be able to do most of that stuff here. A lot of that stuff will translate there as well. I could also do it software side and change the responsiveness of stuff there. So the Noto inertia wheel users, let me know how you're feeling about this stuff. Uh, all, uh, all very welcome feedback uh, for the people who actually have this. I love being able to do this. This makes this very fun for me to be able to practice operating camera moves. So we'll love to hear feedback as well. 
So say you want to practice actually moving the camera now. So the way that we do that, if you haven't seen the other video, I'm trying to think of like what a good camera move is. Uh, I guess I'm going to start like here. I'm holding A, or you would hold 1. I'm going to move over, and I'm going to hold B. So now, if I hit A, I'm going to move over here, like this. Over 5 seconds, if I hit B, I'm going to move back. So I'll be able to change the time of how long the move is uh, in the next update, or one of the next updates, so that you can practice your camera move. So I'm going to hit A, let's go to 1, and I'm just panning to try to keep him in the center of the frame. Hit B, and we're going to go back. So this is your basic way of being able to practice camera moves while the camera is moving, while the camera is stationary. So let's hit V and look inside this. Let's see how the move looks uh, in this view. Yeah, see, it has a little bit of a stuttering issue, which is funny because it doesn't in my Unreal Engine project, but it does in Cinetracer. But I will figure out what that is uh, for the future so that we can do full screen operating. Just know for now, this very first update with this um, camera move system it has the stuttering thing. I'm not sure what it is, but again, I can hit Y. And this view is good, too, because you can actually see uh, where the camera is moving. So it's kind of like reality, where you would be operating with your right eye, most people. And your left eye, you can see the outside world. So you can see an actor walking in. And so this kind of simulates that as well. So this is how we're going to actually move uh, the camera at the same time. So another thing that I think people are going to want to be able to do is make an actor, say, like walk back and forth. And we can actually do that. I think I need to make a video explaining it again. I think the older tutorial might have uh, disappeared off the internet. You're going to want to use a blocking actor. And I'm going to choose him. And he falls to the world. And what you're going to do is select him and click this plus button. Okay. With him selected now, if you right click, he will walk to that uh, place that you just right clicked. That's how that works. It's kind of awkward because if you right click, that's how you move the angle. So I still need to work on the UI for this and the controls. Anyway, with him selected and on his first mark there, zero mark, if you scroll, you'll change the direction that he wants to face. Right? And so what we're going to do now is hit plus and it's going to add another mark and it added it right on top of the other one. So I'm going to right click here. And he's going to walk over there. So I'm going to spin with my mouse wheel and face him back this way. And so now if I hit play, he's going to walk from 0 to 1. It's kind of a complicated system. I'm going to try to make it easier. Um, but it does allow us to automate their movements. So now if I click loop and hit play, he's just going to walk back and forth the whole time. So now if we jump back into our camera, and again, this is the best view for now, I can practice following along with the actor. And you actually can make pretty complicated moves where he like jumps in the air and pulls out a gun and, and all sorts of stuff. I'm not saying it's like a bug-free system yet, and it could be simpler the UI. But the functionality is in there now to be able to make a simple loop like this. And you're able to practice your camera moves on someone who's walking. So I'm going to switch to a longer lens. I'm going to move the camera to about there and just try to practice moving with our character. So if you're really wanting to use Cinetracer and the inertia wheels for practicing uh, your remote head work, this is the way. right? Stationary, you just do it. Uh, you can use the A and B mark system to do little short camera moves. And if you take the time to kind of learn how to use the blocking system, now you can have characters walk around. And you can practice following them, etc., like this. It's pretty fun. Uh, I wish I had more time to just like play with my actual video game instead of just like programming it constantly, but this is a rather enjoyable process in my opinion. So that wraps it up for how to use the inertia wheels. It's also kind of how to use CineTracer in general if you're brand new to it and the camera system and whatnot. And for the inertia wheel users, I would love uh, all the feedback you can give me. I know the full view is very stuttery at the moment. That's obvious. Uh, but any other little nuanced things that I'm not thinking of, would love to hear it. You never know, it might make it into one of the next updates. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll check you guys on the next video.